Hi everyone and welcome to another SMP Relatable. In our previous video, we talked about the three things you require to be a successful budgeter. Understanding, structure and control. In Understanding Your Budget Part 1, we had to split up your spending into two categories. Weekly budget, monthly living expenses. For those who missed it, the link is in the description. For everyone else, we're going through this list. Now normally we would spend a minimum of two hours with our clients to really refine this list. So this is gonna take some effort on your behalf. You're gonna to have to go away, do some research to better understand how much you're spending on these categories. Now obviously we're not spending and or buying everything on this list each month. So that way we need to figure out our yearly average divided by 12 gives us our monthly figure. Also, like our weekly budget, we're only going to be adding money to these categories. The reason for that is because this is a basic standing standard of living. Okay, so let's go through this list. The home, things like rates, insurances, water, gas, electricity, you might have to pay for body corporate. If you're adding things like maintenance, make sure it's for regular items like your pool or septic tank. We're not budgeting for renovations. Automotive, car, bike, boat, caravan, camper van, trailers, they all have things like registration, insurances, um, you might have to pay for servicing, roadside, tolls whilst you're driving these things. Internet, phone and mobile, fairly straightforward. Occupation, sometimes we have to pay for things to keep our jobs like continual professional development, licensing, maybe union fees. Education, kids, parents and anything extracurricular that goes along with their education. Health, medication and treatments, treatments from professionals like doctors. The next list here is more when we start to delve into discretionary expenditure. Yes, we may or may not need these things, but how much we spend can vary greatly in a household. So personal items like clothing, cosmetics and beauty, and insurances. Now these insurances are personal insurances outside of your superannuation, like life insurance, TPD, income protection, maybe funeral insurance. Then you've got things like subscriptions, Foxtel, Stan, Netflix, Spotify, you might have a subscription to a newspaper or magazine, memberships like gyms and clubs. So now that you've gone through that list, add up your total. In this example here, the client's spending $2,100. However, we've got clients nationally and even internationally, and the average spend for those households is between $1,800 and $2,600. So that just gives you an idea of what everybody else may be spending. Okay, if you've gone through this list, I wanna congratulate you again because for the most part, many people wouldn't have even started. Um, coming in the future videos, we're now gonna combine these two things together to start looking at how much money we have left over to pay for our liabilities and any of the luxury items that we may want and also to afford those holidays and Christmases and birthdays. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share with your friends and family. Make sure you tag those people who you know should be budgeting. And as always, anything worth having in this life, we wanna save, make, and protect.